You're listening to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast. I'm Martin Tyler, and you're listening to Harry Simeon. Hello and welcome back to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast brought to you by 90 Min. It's transfer deadline day. Everything's crazy as usual. There's reports coming out left, right and centre. Arsenal desperately trying to move a number of players on before that 11pm deadline. But perhaps to the surprise of some of us, Arsenal are making moves to bring in another defender. Takahiro Tomiyasu is said to be on his way to Arsenal from Bologna. And I've had a lot of you actually DM me uh, throughout the day saying, what do you know about him? What do you know about him? Because of uh, obviously my connection with Serie A. But uh, I've brought someone better than me uh, to give you the analysis on Tomiyasu. Someone who uh, recently wrote a scout report on him that I that was my go-to thing. Uh, when I wanted to read a little bit about him earlier on today. So I thought, why not ask him on? Welcome back to the programme, the brilliant Lee Scott. Lee, how are you, sir? Yeah, I'm all good. Thank you, Harry. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. I, I must admit, I wasn't expecting business from Arsenal on Transfer <laughs> Deadline Day no. in terms of incomings. But there you go. Uh, according to reports, it looks around about a €20 million Euro fee uh, with apparently €3 million Euros in add-ons. Uh, what can you tell us? Uh, about Tommy Asu, because for a lot of Arsenal fans, he's a bit of an unknown quantity. Yeah, understandably so. He's not somebody who, who has a, a significant profile, really, within European football. Um, he moved across to Europe originally with St. Truden, a, a Belgian to the top flight team um, from the Japanese league. And he stayed there for, I think, a year, year and a half or so before Bologna moved very quickly to secure the deal. For those that don't know, Bologna are by no means a big club. Even in Italy, they're not a big club. They're, they're bottom half Serie A kind of expectations. But they recruit very, very intelligently. They they recruit young players. They recruit, recruit players with the potential to sell on and, and make profits, if you like. And, and that's obviously what they've done here. They paid a, a nominal fee, I think, less than, I think it was about three or four million at the very most, to take Tommy Asu. And now, obviously, they're going to make a huge profit on that. Um, he's a, a defensive player who is a Japanese international. He played very, very well for Japan in the Olympics. Um, they, they had a good run in that tournament and he's played for the senior national team several times as well. Capable of playing either as a right back, a right wing back or as a central defender. Curiously though, he is right footed, but for Bologna, when he's played as a central defender, quite often he plays as the left-sided central defender in a back three as opposed to playing on his natural side, if you like. Um, he's an excellent passer of the ball, really, really good at breaking lines. That was one of the things that really caught my eye. A little bit of trade secrets, a little bit, I suppose. But when I'm assessing you know, central defenders, one of the, the benchmarks that I look at, one of the metrics that I really like is progressive passes per 90. Um, a, a metric you can get on Scout, and it tells you how good defenders are with the ball at their feet and playing those passes that are so important in the modern game. And that's where Tommy Yasu really stood out to me. He hasn't lost that. Um, I would say when he's playing as a right back or a right wing back, don't expect him to be that player who gets around the outside to provide width and get the byline and look for crosses. That's really not his game. Very much more of a Trent Alexander-Arnold type in that he'll hang behind the ball and look to get the ball played back before looking to access the box from there. But definitely, I, I think a really positive signing for Arsenal. Yeah, you you mentioned to me on WhatsApp that the price is a little bit of a steal because, as you yeah. say, that there are a lot of positives around uh, Tommy Asu, a player that uh, Spurs were linked with quite heavily earlier on in the transfer window. And I, if I'm not mistaken, that was what you wrote the report around, right? Yeah, I've actually done a few on Tommy Asu for anybody who's a fan of scouted football. Um, I have done the report for Tommy Asu in one of their older handbooks as well. Um, I've written about him today. I had an article go live in Total Football Analysis today, which is a data piece looking at players similar to Jules Conde, the, the Sevilla defender who Chelsea are heavily linked with. And when I did the data analysis, Tommy Asu was one of the profiles that was closest to 
Jules Kunde in terms of the way that they play the game, their output and their metrics. So I, I think it's definitely a steal. Last year, Tommy Asu has been heavily linked to moves to like, so Juventus or Inter Milan. So obviously there were clubs within Italy that were paying close attention to, to his development at Bologna. And I think if he'd made that move, then obviously the next move, if it was to an Arsenal, you'd be looking at double the price at least if he was coming from Juventus. So it's just the fact that you're getting him from Bologna, and again, they're, they're a smaller stature side. They'll be quite happy to recoup £20 million with an add-on, as you said, and that way they'll then go and reinvest that money. And If not in January, they'll reinvest at the end of the season, and again, in young players will look to do the same thing. So from an Arsenal perspective, Lee, we are you know, as a fan base, we feel like we desperately need a right back. You've mentioned all the different positions that Tommy Asu can play in. One of them is right back. Do you feel, though, that he's a little bit wasted in that position? Do you feel like he's, he's greater or, or he shows greater strength when he's played as part of a back three instead? It's very difficult to say. It, this is the problem with players. It's great from a coaching perspective and from a team building perspective to have players who are comfortable in two or three positions. But for Arsenal at the moment, I suppose a, a good example would be Maitland-Niles, who's obviously agitating for a move at the moment. He's a player who probably would have benefited from having one position and sticking to one position in terms of his development and finding a space for himself in the team. That's never happened. And he's kind of, is he a winger? Is he a central midfielder? Is he a fullback? Nobody was sure. He's not sure. The coaching staff's not sure. And he's kind of fallen away from that a little bit. I think Tommy Yasu gives you that versatility. But... I think his main position for Arsenal will be at right back. I think that he'll give balance to the Arsenal side because at the moment, when when you watch Arsenal play, I know this is a sore topic for any Arsenal fans talking about <laughs> watching the club play at the moment, I understand. Um, but when you watch them play, you see Kieran Tierney. If you look at the average positions after the game, Kieran Tierney is so high on that left side of the, the pitch and he gets so far forward and now of course Grant Jacques has been missing with a suspension so he won't have that defensive cover on that side but Tommy Asu coming in as the right back on the opposite side he will sit a little bit deeper and it gives you it gives Arteta that flexibility as a coach a lot of teams a lot of smart clubs and smart coaches do this where in possession, they change to a three at the back with one of the full backs staying deeper, whereas out of possession, it's a four at the back. So it gives you that flexibility, almost the best of both systems. And I think that from that position, Tommy Yasu can still be very important with his ability to kind of find those passes. He's really good at getting the ball, supporting behind the ball, getting the ball back, and then either switching the play with a diagonal or playing the ball into the strikers. He can find those passes, those gaps in defensive structure. So I think that he gives cover and he will be able to play in the centre of defence. You, you might not have to suffer from the, the, the central defensive partnerships that you saw at <laughs> the weekend again if you have Tommy Asu. There, there is a possibility. The only, the only knock on him, and it has been a knock, is that he is slightly undersized for a central defender. I think he's 5 foot 11. Um, he claims, I think, to be 6 foot, but I would be very surprised if he is 6 foot. What I would say, though, is that he makes up for that with his ability to read the ball. He is actually quite strong in the air. He reads the flight of the ball really well and has good timing in his jumps, which allow him to compete for aerial duels. But don't expect him to go up against a Calvert Loon, for example, if you play against Everton. So that will be a consideration for Arteta and exactly how he uses them. But having a player like that who is willing to switch positions in the defensive line will give that flexibility. Fantastic insight into the player, Lee. Really, uh, really appreciate it. Uh, for those of you who don't follow Lee on social media, you can find him at FM Analysis. Uh, he's a scout, he's an analyst, uh, and he's an author as well. He's brilliant at what he does, and I'm sure you can tell that uh, from that brilliantly put download of information. Um, Lee, he does fit into the kind of uh, profile of player that Arsenal have seemingly been looking for this summer, 22 years old. Um you know, it fits in with the Ramsdale signing, with the White signing, with the Tavares deal, with Odegaard, etc. Um, just before I let you go, kind of from an outside perspective, what have you made of Arsenal's transfer business this summer? Because a lot of us feel as though the team, while these transfers make sense, hasn't necessarily improved enough to achieve our objectives in the short term. What do you make of it looking in? I think looking at it objectively, and I was actually speaking about somebody, speaking to somebody about this just the other day, I think objectively looking at it from outside, Arsenal have had potentially the strongest transfer window for me in the Premier League this season. I understand that there's a lot of 
upset at the moment within the Arsenal fan base, and you're probably feeling the same way, Harry. The, the performances this season have not been up to standard. But the players that have been signed, the likes of Odegaard especially, Samba Lukoko, all these players coming in are going to be players for the next three, four, five years. They're going to put the club in a really good footing. Combine that with the academy players who are coming through with a couple of experienced players, and suddenly you have an Arsenal who feel like a different proposition. I don't think there was ever going to be a quick fix. I don't think that realistically Arsenal were ever going to be Champions League contenders this season. But I think going forward, if they stick with the process and stick with the plan that they seem to have, I think they'll come through on the other side stronger. Fingers crossed you're right. I feel a little bit better now I've heard it from you. Fingers crossed you're right. Uh, Lee, thank you so much, mate, for coming on. Really, really appreciate it. And I'm sure we'll catch up soon. No problem. Thank you. Cheers, mate. That was the uh, brilliant Lee Scott, uh, football scout, analyst and author extraordinaire. Great to have him on the show uh, for the first time in a long time, actually. So uh, brilliant to talk to him. Uh, just while we're on the subject of uh, of Tommy Yasu, um, going to bring up a little bit of a, a graphic that was sent over to me by uh, my good friend, Mr. Sooty, a little bit earlier on, which is a great comparison of Tommy Yasu in a number of different areas uh, with some of our current right back options. And I'm just going to hide uh, this banner off of the screen so that you can uh, see it. But just for those of you that are watching on YouTube, if you are listening via the audio platforms, don't worry, I will uh, explain it. But if you look at uh, Tommy Asu against the current Arsenal right backs as Hector Bellerin, Callum Chambers and Cedric Suarez. He dominates them in so many different areas. Uh, we're talking about progressive passing distance, uh, the amount of times he dribbles past players, uh, successful pressures. Um, we're talking about tackling. We're talking about dribbles completed and aerial duels. Um, he doesn't beat all of them in every single aspect, but if you look at his shape, on the map in comparison to to those of you know Hector Bellerin or or Cedric and Callum Chambers, he is significantly better uh, in all of those areas. And of course, we know nowadays, even if you don't agree with it, that a lot of the decisions made around transfers uh, in the modern day are based on this kind of thing, on, on statistical analysis. It's how a lot of clubs that maybe don't necessarily have the finances have been able to compete with some of the bigger clubs, uh, you know, in, in the league. You look at Brentford and the way they've done it. They're big advocates of this kind of analysis. You look at Atalanta, who are also excellent in their recruitment. Leicester City, to cite an example, a little bit closer to home. So uh, it is encouraging that Arsenal have at least done their homework uh, on this player and uh, fingers crossed he can come in and have an impact. Right, I can see there are over 550 of you watching us right now across the multiple platforms. I would like to ask you, if you could, please, it really does help to hit that like button. It really does make a difference. Uh, 72 likes on the board on YouTube at the moment, but there's over, as I say, 500 of you watching on that platform alone. So please do hit the like button. It really, really does help. And for the last 15 minutes or so of this episode, and it is the first one of today. Don't worry, I'm going to be back at seven o'clock and we're going to be talking uh, a little bit more about the window in general. This episode was a focus uh, on, of course, Arsenal's imminent arrival, Takahiro Tommy Yasu, who we understand is having a medical in Italy. So uh, we'll We'll save the talk about the rest of the transfer window for a little bit later on because there is plenty to discuss, as there always is with Arsenal. But as I say, hit that like button. Quick reminder that this episode and this show is brought to you by Manscaped.com. So for all your male grooming needs, head over to their website, uh, get involved. And if you use our discount code 90MIN20, you'll receive 20% off of your order as well as free worldwide shipping. So why not become one of 2 million men worldwide that are currently manscaping. Uh, also, just a quick little plug. Uh, I just finished, before we went live, recording an interview with former Arsenal goalkeeper Alex Manninga. Remember, some of you were guessing on social media who the secret guest was. Uh, it was indeed Alex Manninga, Arsenal double winning goalkeeper in the 97-98 season. He was very open, very honest and very frank about the situation at Arsenal at the moment, as well as talking about uh, Mikel Arteta as a manager and his time at Highbury. That episode is dropping tomorrow evening. Uh, so once you see that pop up on the schedule on YouTube, uh, please make sure you head over, give it a like, and I'm sure you're going to find it 
fascinating. Uh, right, let's go over to the chat box and see uh, what you guys are saying. Um, just a quick one while I remember talking about the Alex Manninger episode, we did say we're going to run a competition with those who got the uh, the guest right. And we are going to do that. I'm going to put all your names in a hat. And uh, on the earlier show tomorrow, we're going to draw out the winner and we'll get a prize sent in your direction. Uh, right. Let's see uh, what you guys are saying in the chat. Lots of debate and discussion around how good this transfer window has been overall. And we will do a special episode on that uh, once the window slams shut. Um, Uncanny Hexicon says, uh, just hope he ain't another Inamoto and actually plays. I do feel like at times, and I don't mean this disrespectfully, but I do feel like at times in the past, Arsenal made signings partly based on players' ability, but partly because of their marketability and, and to open the doors to certain markets in certain countries. I don't see that, though, with Takahiro Tomiyasu. I think he is a player that, you know, can add something to this squad. He's a player that, as I mentioned, was heavily linked with Tottenham Hotspur. Uh, I was asked questions about him then. Um, didn't think that Arsenal would go in for him. I know it's been mentioned in the past as a potential option, but I've got to be honest, while I kind of sort of remained hopeful that Arsenal would do business between now and the end of the window, I wasn't really expecting a great deal other than the outgoings that we know uh, Arsenal are working on behind the scenes at the moment. Uh, lots of you commenting on the potential signing. I think with this one, I think... It's again, it's, it's very similar to the other signings we've made this summer, right? There are pl they are players who um, who we think can go on and have a big impact. But I also understand why fans are a little bit like, well, you know, is this guy actually going to come in and make us a better team today, now, you know, instantly? And I, and I get all of that. I get that concern. I really do. But I, I do think that this kind of needed to happen in terms of the transfers. My gripes with Mikel Arteta right now uh, are not necessarily around transfers. It's around other things. It's around the management of the team. It's around the management um, of the uh, of the side in general. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the Kia Jurabchan stuff a little bit later on on the uh, next episode because, as I said, there is a lot of... Um, there is a lot of talk about that. He's been talking about the Willian situation. And as I say, we'll, we'll properly round up today uh, on the 7 p.m. UK time stream. That'll be available in podcast format shortly afterwards as well. Uh, F4 Freestyler says, Harry, do you see Arsenal signing anyone else except for Tommy Asu? I don't. Uh, we were told, weren't we? And it was reported over the last sort of 24 hours that Arsenal uh, were looking to add a right back between now and the window slamming shut at 11 p.m. UK time. And it seems as though that is exactly what Arsenal are looking to do. I don't envisage them doing any further business, but just like the Tommy Asu deal, you know, a lot of people are kind of tweeting and saying, yeah, Arsenal have moved really quickly uh, to do this today. Well, obviously, the groundwork would have been done prior to that. Just because it hadn't been reported and the cat wasn't let out of the bag, it doesn't mean that Arsenal weren't already in discussions uh, with regards to Tommy Asu prior to today. So I think we need to be mindful of that. Could there be something going on bubbling under the surface that we don't know about? Maybe, uh, but I'm not sure uh, that there is. And therefore, I can't commit to saying that we definitely will do additional business. Um Chris McD says that, Harry, do you think with the addition of uh, Tommy, I love the way we've shortened his name already, uh, do you think that Arteta will revert back to a 3-4-3 with him, White and Gabby as centre-backs? I'm not sure. Um, I, I do think he will play as a right-back, as Lee said. I do think that his ability to kind of drop back, hold back, tuck inside and play as a centre-back will allow us to switch into that back three and allow Kieran Tierney to bomb on when we are attacking. But I don't think that will be the go-to formation. What it does give us, though, Chris, as you, you rightly point out, is the option to do that. You know, we did it against Manchester City the other day, reverted back to the back three. Unfortunately, we didn't have the players um, or the heart or the attitude, but we won't get into that again, uh, to kind of give them a game and make it difficult for them. We gifted them the first three goals. And from then on, it was a, a losing battle. But I do think that while I don't expect Mikel to completely overhaul the formation and go with a back three every single week, I think he wanted someone who would give him that option. And I think that Tommy Asu does that. Uh, he gives you that option and he is most certainly an upgrade on Cedric. He is most certainly an upgrade 
on Callum Chambers and with Hector Bellerin headed for the exit door, uh, which is said to be what's ki- what kind of Arsenal were waiting for with regards to this deal being done. Um, you know, I- I'm pretty pleased about the signing. Uh, Matt G says, I think he looks good. Feel sorry for all our new signings, though. If we had got Basuma and Madison, I think fans would be more excited about our other signings. Uh, agreed. Agreed. Um, let's see uh, what else we've got here in terms of your comments around this imminent arrival. Um, let's see. Here we go. Uh, Rye Dog says, Tommy Asu is in the 99th percentile in aerial duels for a right back, 83rd as a centre back. He's excellent in the air and as a team that soaks up pressure, he's well versed in defending. Um, what else have we got? Um, lots of you talking about Bellerin, William. Again, we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later on. Um, in terms of going, you know, with the, the whole window kind of analysis, Bod Lou says, you can't just spend all your money on young players. There has to be a balance. There's no future if there's no present. Valid point as well. And again, it's something that we're going to get into. We're going to get into a lot of links. Um, some of you asking me for transfer news. I can't give you transfer news uh, that I don't have because there isn't any at this moment in time other than Takahiro Tomiyasu is closing in on a move to Arsenal. So uh, there you go. Thought I'd bring you guys uh, a special edition based on uh, Takahiro Tomiyasu. Hope you enjoyed the insight from Lee Scott. And as I say, we'll be uh, on a little bit later on today uh, with at least one more stream. And if anything major happens, we might even bring you a second one uh, later on as well. Uh, so make sure you've hit the like button on this one. If you haven't done so already, make sure you've subscribed to the podcast. If you're new, the content is a little bit ad hoc when it comes to deadline day, but that's just the way it is. Make sure you like, make sure you subscribe. If you want to become a member, click on the join button. Uh, also, check out Manscaped, our sponsors, and I'll be back very, very soon with more. Until later on today, ciao and uh, see you soon. You're listening to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast. I'm Martin Tyler, and you're listening to Harry Simeon.